Hello there, good afternoon everybody. So sorry I'm late. It's been a little bit of a, a hectic day here at Short Hours. Um, we've been in a supply meeting for a lot longer than we expected to, but we've got some lovely new stuff coming up. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been halfway around the country today and only just got back again, so sorry about that, but we're here now anyway. So hello Margaret and Amanda from Georgia, and hello Bonnie. Oh, loads of you on Facebook. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, Jill, Jane, Bonnie on YouTube now. Hi, Helen, Sue. Uh, Sylvia, Raina, Lynn and Sharon. Hello, Jackie, Kathy, Jean, Tina, Christine, Claire. Oh, uh, Helen, Kathy, thank you for waiting for me. Hello, Carol, Amanda, another child's apron. That's a good idea, Amanda. I shall write it in my book. Child's apron for Amanda. Hello, Susie from Germany. Welcome along. Uh, Margarita from Costa Rica. Margarita, Costa Rica. Uh, right, apron. Was it Amanda? Sorry. I think so. Rubbish at names. Hello, Bob. Um, it's snowing outside, so I've got a, I have a dog in the studio. She's rather wet. Doesn't like the rain, doesn't mind the snow. Hello. Hello, sweet pea. Hello, what we got? Um, hello, Louise. Sorry if I miss anybody. Christine, Elizabeth, Margarita, Sarah. Hello. Uh, Anne. Uh, it is a little. It's not settling here yet. Hello, Sarah. Um, right, so we are going, oh, Diana, my sister, oh, she's gone. She'll be rushing inside so she doesn't get wet in a minute. What do you think to me, chickens? Did you see the pictures on Facebook? Having another three, I've got room for six, so I'm going to rescue another three. It is International Women's Day, I know, Susan, so, yeah, power, all that. Every day is International Women's Day in our house. Um, hello, Jane in Jacksonville. Hi, Janet, Marilyn, Linda, Amanda and Chris and June and Linda and Janet and Sharon and Anne and Melanie and Vicky and Helen and Sheila and oh, there's so many of you here. I'm not going to say hello to everybody. Love the chicken pig said Sharon. I know, that was so cute. Uh, the sun is shining and the sky is blue in Spain, says Mary. The sky is grey and a little bit white and the snow isn't settling, so it's just very wet and miserable here. Hello, Salami, uh, uh, sorry, Salmi in Malaysia. Hi, Anne. Uh, uh, Bobby wasn't too too pleased the first time she saw the girls, to be honest, um, Anne. Um, she when I mean, she can't get to them because they're they're in a pen, but she won't she won't she won't be mad. Wasn't happy. But after a couple of days she's getting used to them, so now she'll look at them. So I'm, I'm hoping everything's going to be fine. Didn't know I did the lives. Gleaners have done them for years, twice a week. So uh, join us on uh, Wednesday afternoon at four o'clock and Saturday morning at 11. Um, hello, Carol in Ohio. Brian's in Ohio, maybe your neighbours, you never know. Um, Carol's a new member, welcome along, Carol. Hello, nice to have you here. Rose is in South Carolina. Oh, we are all over the place, aren't we? We're everywhere we are. Um, hello, Joe. Hello, Zenup. I am very good, thank you very much. Um, Dominica, Anita in North Wales. Carolyn's in Texas. Um, our Zainab is in Dubai. Hello, Stephen's in Texas. You could be neighbours. Little village Texas, isn't it, from what I've heard. Hello, Mary. Hello, April. I was a while, but got it now. What is that coming here? Uh, stressed at the moment, same machine broken again twice in two months. Ooh, ooh, maybe time for a new one. Good excuse though, Linda, isn't it? Hi, Teresa. Hello, Christina Lavina in Ontario and Olive from upstate New York. Now, Rita's in New York. So you you could be naive, you never know. I said, we, we are all over the place. We're in the Wirral. That's where Sharon is, it's cold there. Wait until the chickens come and sit on your lap. Bobby won't be happy then. I know, I can't, I can't see that happening. Pecking my fingernails at the moment. We've got that far. Um, Spokane, I've not heard of that one, Patricia. In WA is at Washington. And um, Hi Peggy, Lois, four degrees in Norfolk. What's your, don't know, what's everybody else's temperatures? And in, I'll tell you what, where in the world are you and what temperature is it wherever you are in the world? Cold in Wellingborough, oh I know. Wet and snowy in Gloucester. Chickens look fun, oh they're lovely Blodwin. They, they are, they just, I love chickens. They've got so much character. Anyway. Got a few new things to show you. Like I said, we've been at a, um, a supplier's for most of the day today and spent a lot more than we expected to. But, oh, and we've got some really good deals as well. So we'd like to pass those on to you too. Oh, hello, Dal, good morning, America. Saludos de, de Mexico. I hope I got that right. Probably completely wrong. One degree in Birmingham, says Andrea. Three quarters of a degree in, in Suffolk. 
39 in Ohio, says Brian. Oh, show off. 73 in San Antonio. Uh, 39 in New Jersey. Uh, Fee says it's warm back here. Warmer in the south of France. Does your duke and embroidery? It's got decorative stitches, um, Carla, but it's not an embroidery machine as such. Uh, oh, nice, Judy. Thank you very much. Uh, not zero degrees Celsius in Ontario, says Diane. Somebody else is in Ontario. Who else is in Ontario? Three in Devon, 43 in Lubbock in Texas. Oh, nice. Minus 11 in Calgary. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. Hello, Eskimo Barbie. Oh, Eskimo Barbie. I'm just picturing what you look like now with your long blonde hair and your furry hat and, and, and a, a fishing rod and an igloo. Completely wrong, isn't it? But, you know, you call yourself Eskimo Barbie and that's the picture that springs to mind. Um, first day is dry, 11 in Cornwall, 2 in Blackpool, 11 in Cornwall. Watching you at the swimming pool. Oh, Kath, nice. 2 in, oh, uh, 5 in... in Dublin. <laughs> Need a picture. I think we've got a picture of you. Is that a dog on there? I can't. Sorry if it's not. It looks like a Labrador from here. Probably completely wrong. Three degrees in York. Julie's received her order today. Sheena loves the sewing tutorials, but wish she would just sew and not keep saying hello to everyone all the time. We, I do do pre-recorded. Um, videos for those who don't like the chat, Sheila. Um, and if you want to watch this one back again, it will be on Facebook forever. So you can fast forward it and get to the sewing bit without the chat. But the idea with, with a live is that it's live and we can interact and talk to each other. So I try and cater for both of you. If you don't like the chats, then watch one of the videos um, or watch back later on when, um, when you can fast forward it, basically. But it's, I don't see the point in being live when you don't talk to people personally. Um, the cushions behind me, oh, those are Kim's. It's reverse applique. Those are on her um, her uh, her blog on their YouTube. I can't keep up with her. She's overtaking me. She's everywhere. I don't know, honestly. Got more followers than I have. Um, oh, thank you, everyone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not for everybody. I do. I mean, I've said before, if if you are new to us, I do two live shows a week. There's a lot of chat because um, I like it, a lot of people like it, but I do, as I said, trying to cater for everybody. So a lot of the time with, if I have time, whatever I'm making the live shows, I will do a, um, a video of it without all of the chat so you can just watch the, watch the sewing. So some people like it, some people don't, but you can't please everybody. Um, but it is, a nice, it, it, is, it is a nice little community. Thank you for everyone that's just said that. Um, because it's the only chance I get to interact with people. You know, if I'm, if I'm recording a video and putting it out wherever it goes out to, it's all little old lonesome me all on my own doing it. But I love this chat. I love the interaction and the feedback. Because I know I'm only reading what you say, but um, it's, it's the most interactive that I can be with you, particularly when you're on the other side of the world. And so many of you stay up late or get up early to be with me. And I, I do think it's lovely. Um, oh, they have. I try and keep them down to a, a minimum, June, because um, a lot of the time YouTube will put adverts on, like it or not. Kim has adverts on her videos and she doesn't put them on. She's not monetized. So the adverts go on, but she doesn't get paid for them. Um, I can choose how I want the adverts to go on to the videos when I record them. I don't put videos on the lives, um, not unless they're old ones. Um, I mean, it's pennies. It, it doesn't pay the rent or anything like that. It's a very small amount of money. But I try and always put skippable because I can cope with three seconds of something that I can then click off. I don't like the non-skippable where you have to sit through it. And I don't like the ones that pip up, pop up. And then a lot of the time you'll get a non-skippable and then a skippable. And it just seems to go on for ages. So I, I do cut my advertising on YouTube right down to a minimum. Um, but the, the, the thing with that is, with the monetization on YouTube, you don't pay for it. So if you can put up with, a, with like, what is it, 30 seconds for a skippable? If you can put up with that, I might get a cent because it's in dollars for doing that. But um, it, it doesn't come from you. It just comes from your time putting up with it. So, so thank you for that. So it certainly doesn't pay the mortgage, but, you know, it is a little bit that helps. 
um, watch a live if you don't want the interruption. Yeah, that, that's true, Sarah, because we do. Maybe people just don't understand the way that it works. If people are just new to these live streams, um, then maybe you don't realize that there is an alternative there. Uh, I love that, Jane, recognizing names. They are, oh, thank you, Diane. I don't, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, if, if I, if I went for the non-skippable, the skippable, the overlays and the, uh, and the, and the mid-rolls and everything that you can throw at a video, it would just be like watching adverts. And that's like buying a magazine, there's nothing in it but adverts in there. And I, I don't, I wouldn't like to do that. So I think maybe you don't like it either. But I think most of us are used to skipping ads. I think most of the videos on YouTube that I watch, um, I skip ads. I, I put up with it for 30 seconds and skip ad. But there is something. Mm, there is an, a way. Uh, what are you on? There's something on YouTube that you can join. I think you pay for it, but then you don't get adverts at all. Can't remember. Are you a premium member or something like that? Oh, I don't remember. Um, Jilly, are you lurking? <laughs> She's probably there, Sarah. Normally is. Um, what are the pink parcels? Oh, Angela, those are orders that people have placed from my website from Debbie Shaw Sewing. They normally go out in either a pink or a purple envelope, so people get excited when they get a pink envelope because it means that they've got a fabric delivery. Oh, hi, Heather. Uh, she says, Debbie, I'm normally a silent watcher, but feel I have to comment. You spend your precious time entertaining us, and I'm sure most of us are very grateful. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you, Heather. We, we do have, I do have a lot of messages on the uh, on my email from um, the website from people just saying, oh, I'm one of your silent ones. Uh, I know there's, because you can see like the analytics afterwards, I, I know how many people have seen the video and how many people have commented on videos and there's a huge difference. So I know a lot, um, a lot of people watch but don't comment, so that's very nice of you to do that. Oh, go on, Laura, thank you, thank you. Uh, June's got pink parcels today and Sally's got a pink parcel. Rita's watching on my phone at a dental appointment. Mm, I hope it's a, I hope it's just a, an appointment with a hygienist to have them cleaned and freshened. Mind you, that's not pleasant either, is it? My hygienist really loves her job, and I find that a bit strange because you're putting people in pain. Mm. Um, oh, Pam's finally joined the Half Yard Club and made the first March project. Congratulations. My bantams are posh frizzles. I don't know. I know that the two, uh, the white one and the ginger one, silk is. I don't know what the little grey fluffy thing is with the pants on, with the frilly knickers as somebody put it earlier on. Not sure what she is. Is she a frizzle? I'm not sure. Uh, hi Helen, hi Sarah. Oh, oh, sorry, talking to Rita. Um, right, so, oh, YouTube saying to open a widget. I don't know what's going on there. Buffing on Facebook. I'm blaming the snow, Tracy, because everything is going out from here as, um, oh, thanks Tracy, as, uh, as normal. Facebook's freezing. Oh, do you know YouTube's freezing now? Hum. Hum. I'll have a quick sip while we're waiting and my cold coffee. Oh, there, there's Julie. There she is. Um, watching on TV and typing on the phone. Got you in stereo. Oh, e echoey. Yeah, I, don't, I can't help the freezing, Marilyn. Everything's going out okay from here. The only thing I can think of that, you know, if you get hot weather, affects everything. If we get cold weather, if we get snow, if we get rain, if we get storms, if we get, everything affects it. It's, um, but we're going out from here, okay. Buffering and not in a good way. Oh, Brenda's got a Maddie book. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, do you remember the world tappers and shunters? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's really frustrating, but, um, oh no, no when I fr I'm freezing on funny faces, must try not to do funny faces, it always freezes, if I go like, I bet it's frozen right there, I bet that one's frozen. <laughs> oh, Sheila, we're never used to the weather here, are we? Uh, we have very hot weather where the tarmac and the roads melt and, um, and the rail lines buckle and then freezing lines where everything snaps. Um, Elsie says it's a bit glitchy, but can hear us loud and clear. I'm disjointed. Oh, no, I know it's been said, Sheila. I am so disjointed. Leaves on the line. Yeah, le a few leaves on the line in autumn, and we've got trains skidding off into the countryside. I don't, I don't know where we're going. I went to um, 
Where did it go? In Germany. Might have been Berlin. I can't remember where I went. Uh, to, oh, a long time ago, I went, went to visit some friends and it was in February. It was the... Uh, oh, Kathy, you can put a, a picture on Facebook if you like. Um, was it Berlin? can't remember. But it was February. I have never been so cold in all my life. I know there's probably colder countries, but oh my gosh, that was so cold. But they had... Um, you know, like the snow plows you get on the front of tractors over here, if you're lucky. They had pavement size ones, and people were just driving around cr clearing the pavements. And it was like no disruption. You get heavy snow, it's freezing cold, we clear the pavements, off you go. It's very, it's very good. We don't, we don't get that here, we just skid all over the place. Uh, Heather with uh, Heather's snowing. Oh, I'm glad you can hear me anyway. Uh, very live very remotely but all clear. Okay, well I've got some new fabrics to show because like I said we have been busy shopping today. Um, I'm just going to open my widget. I have no idea what that means but on YouTube it says open widget. Oh, oh we've got lots of errors. Not receiving the video to maintain a smooth streaming. I don't know why. We haven't changed anything. Oh well, can't do it now. So hopefully things will um, pick up. Um, whoop, oh, everything's gone a little bit strange. I do apologise, bear with me. There we go. So, let me show you some of the new fabrics. That I just caught a glimpse of myself. This is snow hair. Um, hello, Ginny. Hello, Anne. Oh, uh, excellent way of clearing this. Yeah, I know, they were so on the ball with it. Uh, the sound is great, but you're talking without moving your lips. It's a skill, Michelle. I've spent years practicing talking without moving my lips. I make a great ventriloquist. <laughs> Leanna can hear me. Lovely. Right, let me show you some of the new stuff. Now, um, first of all, I didn't actually have that. That's very cool. We do have back in stock the Lewis and Irene Duck Egg Blue Coronation Fabric. It's the last. We've we got a bolt. That's all we can get left of that, which is uh, about 20 metres, I think. Um, so that's all we can get hold of. So if you want Coronation Lewis and I are in Duck Egg Blue, that's going to be the last of it. We do have some new stuff, though. And let me show you this. Now, you know the Mulberry Tree fabric? Incredibly popular. We have sage. I think it's sage. We've got uh, a red. We've got the navy. We've got the grey. We've got the cream. We now have... The gold. Lovely, isn't it? This is such a popular fabric. It's a canvas. It is quite stiff. I wouldn't use it for dressmaking. Um, but for bags, for cushion covers, for upholstery, for those kind of homewares, this is absolutely perfect. So this is a brand new colour on the website today. If you go to the Debbie Shaw Sewing website and look under new arrivals, um, then, oh yeah, blame the chickens, Yvonne, they're pecking the cables. And then this is on, on there, but we do have some new canvases as well. So this one is Vintage Sewing Themes. This is one of the ones that we picked up this morning when we were at the meeting. And I love this, it's, oh, it's got labels and the scissors and mannequins and I'm thinking storage boxes for the sewing room. Um, and again, bags, uh, bags to keep your fat quarters and your, so you go into classes and things like that, or sewing machine dust covers, anything for your sewing marine. Sewing marine, there you go. Um, Sarah, do your job. <laughs> Sarah um, is the uh, moderator on Facebook now. So if she's, she's going to try and keep popping in with um, uh, links and updates and, and things like that. So she says, I, I keep forgetting who I am today. <laughs> uh, just got the red, want the gold now. Oh, the gold mulberry trees is lovely, isn't it? It's, uh, it's very, it's quite delicate. Not sure, we should have matched that to another colour, actually. Must do that. Now then, so that is the sewing themes. We have another one. I love this one. Love it, love it, love it. Look at this. Bumblebees. And again, it's on the canvas. But I just think that is so 
delicate and classy and cushion covers and bags the gold trick of my armchair nice for an armchair said i wouldn't wear it is it is quite firm but for upholstery absolutely perfect but i think this one for a bag would look lovely and i'm going to show you really quickly i'm going to jump ahead to something that i wasn't going to show you at the moment but this goes so well now this this is um oh let me just unwind it oh do, do, bear with me um this is kim's choice i fell in love with this as soon as we saw it Huge pom-poms, but look how well that goes. This is the mocker option. So that, do you imagine this around the edge of a cushion cover? These are one inch, one inch um, across, two inches apart. If you wanted them closer, then you should simply double them up and you've got a really nice solid line of pom-poms then. But it goes so well with the bee fabric. We've got two colours in this one. So this is all brand new, we've not done anything like this before. So this is really exciting. Love this kind of stuff. That's the mocker. So a little bit paler and warmer, and this one's the coffee. Aren't they gorgeous? So again, um, around bags on bag flaps and things like that, they are big pom-poms, Janet. They're one inch across. They did have bigger, but we thought we'd rein it in a little bit and just go for these. Um, but yeah, they are, they're, just, they're just lovely. I love the colours. I love the way that it works with this kind of fabric as well. So I'm just imagining, you know, or on the edge of a cushion cover, that was your cushion cover, just having those as a trim. Or on a throw, on a bedspread, on a large tote bag. I think that's lovely. Hmm. Oh, Yvonne, we're sending out your love to your, to your 99-year-old grandma. She's fallen, she's in bed. Oh, I hope she's going to be okay. We'll send out positive thoughts to her from here. Um, right, what else we got? So that was that one, that was that one. While we're talking pom-poms, we have a little red, white and blue. So if you're thinking coronation, July the 4th. I don't know where else red, white and blue is your flag. Um, but yeah, they, these are, again, these are, they're just over half an inch across and about an inch apart. So, but again, if you wanted to double it up, you can just fold those over and then you get twice the thickness. You can arrange those so that they fit a little bit better, I think. Or maybe you can't. Oh, there you go. Oh, no, you don't. Um, but if you want them closer together, then just rearrange those. But again, around a cushion across the top of some bunting. If you're making something for the coronation, uh, maybe cushion covers, bags, that kind of thing, that would, look, that would be absolutely fantastic. So that's those. Um, Daryl put a lot of pom-poms around two infinity scarves as a birthday present for a friend. That's a nice idea. Um, I'm going to make a box cushion in a bit, by the way. I'll just pop those out of the way. So those are the three new canvases. For a jacket I saw somebody earlier on, not sure for clothing. It'll crease quite easily. I think it's more for craft items, more for bags. I mean, you could try, but it's, it's not like linen. It's a, it's a little bit stiffer than that. It's firmer. So I would say probably more for cushion covers and, and bags. Or maybe chair covers. <gasps> mm. Have you seen the, um, oh, what's it called? The End of the Sea, I think. The canvas we've got on the website in cream, and it's got octopuses and things on it. Love that one. I've actually bought some for my son, whose birthday it is today. He's 42 today, and I'm going to cover an armchair for him. In that um, in that fabric next week, I'll put a picture when I've done it. Um, Alan's got 30 meters of bee fabric from a fabric shop that was closing down. Oh well, don't what are you going to do with 30 meters of fabric, Alan? Um, May the what coronation date? I think it's May the 9th, isn't it, Trevor? Oh, six. May the sixth coronation date. Plenty of time to make things up. Kim's choice. She saw this as we walked into the room and had to practically demand it. I want that one, oh, we've only got a few left. Well, I want them. And because she was saying, look at this. This is the uh, Floral Hearts fabric. It's 100% cotton, 112 centimetres wide. And, oh, 112 centimetres wide. I might have put 122 on the website. That's what happens when I get in charge. But she said, that is a summer dress. So, oh, she's been dressmaking today, actually. She's made a, um, oh, such a lovely, 
little dresses and some viscose off the website um, with ties down the back, like ribbons that cross over. It's so pretty and it's off the shoulder. And then another one using the border fabric. And I can't show you the dresses because she's, um, she's having some pictures taken them and at the moment. And it's 14 tomorrow. Oh, wow. 6th of May, isn't that what we said? May the 6th, coronation date. I think so. Um, right, yeah, so that is beautiful. But again, if you're making not just some addresses, but put some interfacing on the back, and that would make such a fun time. A quilt. Oh, if you just made a big throw and quilted it, that would be amazing. But doesn't that just say summer? Is that not what we're looking at at the moment when we look out the window? That's not snow and grey skies. That is height of summer to me. Loads of fun. Amanda's 55 tomorrow. Happy birthday to you for tomorrow. Denise's birthday on May the 6th. They say everybody, um, <laughs> thanks Sarah, everybody celebrates. Uh, sorry, Denise, you're celebrating the, um, the coronation, so everybody's celebrating your birthday. That has nothing to do with King G. It's all about your birthday. It's a little bit like my birthday, which is July the 4th. The whole of America celebrates my birthday. I like um, postal service still on strike. No, Lisa, they're, they're a little bit slow at the moment. We are posting internationally. I think there's still a little bit of a backlog, but they are taking parcels and we are posting out. Um, wide leg drive. Oh, yes, Tina, that would be lovely. Fia's not happy with coronation. It is my 60th birthday and can't get a restaurant book. Really? Oh, but at least they're celebrating you, Fee. Yeah. Everybody's busy because of you. You should have a street party for yourself instead. Still got more. I did show you uh, the other day, where can I put that? Um, the extra wide backing fabric. This ain't no backing fabric. In blue, this is Lynette Anderson, but we've now got the cream available for you. A backing fabric meaning that it is, hold the line, 247 centimetres wide, but it's Lynette Anderson. So in my little mind, I'm thinking not the back of anything, uh, lining fabric, well, maybe the back of a cushion cover. But if you're doing a lot of uh, bad making, dressmaking, it is a huge amount of fabric. Consider, I think Lynette Anderson is about seven pounds for half a metre. This is nine pound 50 for and that's 112 wide for over twice the width. You're getting twice as much for less than half the price. I'm going to make a cushion cover with this shortly. It's huge. And in fact, the little box behind me here, I'm not talking about that at the moment because that's next month's Half Yard Sewing Club's project and it's a set of three boxes with lids. But I'm not showing you that and I'm not talking... I'm not talking about that, but this is the fabric that I used. This is it, it's really pretty. So we have the blue one back in stock for you, and we've got the brand new colour for you here as well. Um, but it, it's just, I mean, it's, it's all of the Lynette Anderson quality of fabric. It's a beautiful print, matches with the other range, and it's just huge. It is absolutely massive, so almost two and a half metres in width. What else have we got? Oh, while you're there, look at it, it's massive. It's huge. So not for the backing of a quilt, but what, oh, look, I can't even fold it, is that big? What, I'm throwing it at you, look. What about uh, four curtains, four, a quilt top? You could whole cloth quilt that, just quilt over the top of it. It's huge. Um, snowing and dying in Lancashire and blinking freezing. Oh, it was this morning. The suppliers place we went to. Freezing. Um, for a skirt, yeah, we, we could have loads, loads of it. Right, final thing I want to show you. I think, oh no, two final things to show you. More trims. We got daisies. Each one of these is an inch across, so it's really, really pretty. I'm thinking hems of little girls' dresses, um, trims around bags. It'll go around the curve of a bag flap, around cushion covers. It's so pretty, brand new to us today. And finally, we've got loads more, just didn't have a chance to get them all on the website. Um, the final thing I have to show you is Jumbo Rainbow Rick Rack. Not really done Rick Rack before, but this is a, a, a wide one. The width of the whole thing is half an inch. Um, 
so if actually there is a way isn't there of kind of twisting this together to make a more solid trim if that makes sense so if you kind of twist it before you sew it on you get that um, wave like kind of effect which works an awful lot better when you're not doing it on a live stream funnily enough but yeah you can twist it and get like a a candy cane kind of or barley twist kind of thing hello carrie minnesota june says oh rick rack rick rack so you can either sew this straight onto the top glue it onto something if it doesn't go in the in the wash or if I just get the the card it comes off, just pop it behind something like that so all you see is the edge. So it looks like a wave of different colours on there as well. Mm. And loves the Rick Rack Jean, loves the daisies. It's nice to have the trims, isn't it? We're, we're trying to we're trying to bring you a a one-stop shop for everything that you need. We're getting there. Um, we do have lots of trims, more bias binding. Uh, there are some more colours of the piping coming in as well. We're going to be doing more zips, uh, zip collections, and we're looking at doing thread boxes and gift boxes as well. So, lots of lots of plans for us at the website. Right, should we do some sewing while we're here? Because it's uh, we've been ages, haven't we? It's ten to five, and we're only done by now. I did start. This is this is for Sarah particularly. Sarah Bergen. She says, oh, don't worry about it. But I started to make a boxed shape bag in the Create and Craft show the other day and didn't quite get to finish it because we sold out of everything. So they moved on to other stuff. So I only got halfway through doing it. So I thought we'd have a go now. And just, because um, it doesn't actually take very long. Good tip for sewing rickrack. Yes, Denise, if you're, depends how you're going to put it on. If you just want to see the edge of it, I would use my glue stick, um, fold the seam allowance over and put the fabric, uh, the rick rack behind it so I can see exactly where it's going to go. Otherwise, you're going to sew, I know it doesn't go at all with the fabric that I'm using here. So if you can, fold that over, fold the edge over, glue that on, then you can see where it's going. Otherwise, the trick is to sew it on straight down the center so although you've got the wave, there is a solid line straight down the centre. If I put my ruler over the top, whoops, I'm not twisted. You can see there you can sew straight down the centre without leaving any gaps in there. So that's um, that's the best bit. I did start late, yes, Chris. We're getting the fabric blender bundles in. Yes, Diane. Yes, we definitely will. We're going to try and keep those in all the time. If they're not on the website at the moment, I'll put some back in stock as soon as I've finished here. So yes, they will be there. They're all different colours, but you will get six different blender colours. There may be a plain one shoved in there as well. Madison badge hat and material and handles. Right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Um, yes, so yeah, th they will be back in stock. Bear with me. Have you gone on to the uh, Keep Me Informed page? because I'm, I'm not sure what the, what the waiting list is on there at the moment. But if you go on to keep me informed, as soon as they go back in stock, you'll get an email to say they're back in stock. But I know we do have them. So, snowing and freezing in Sheffield. Oh. Right, so, this is going to be... But th these cushion pads, we don't sell cushion pads because they're difficult to post out. So you buy a big, you know, a big sack full of them and they end up looking like that. So they've got nothing in the ends of them. That's not filled in there at all, if I push that in. And basically, that's what it looks like. So what I would do, we'll have a go when it's finished, but that may be a little bit too fat as it is, but nothing in the corners. So there's no harm whatsoever in opening this up and just shoving the filler around. I don't like feather pillows myself. I think the feathers are better on the birds. Um, so I do use a lot of these, but they do, particularly the cheap ones, like these are, these are a bargain. But they're just, they may as well not put them in a cover. So we'll have a go and see what it looks like. But for something like this, perfect. So that is a 12 inch cushion pad, they say. So I've cut my fabric to 12 inches square because remember, I'm going to have a depth to this. So I might even have to add some toy filler to, to make it square. So I have two 12 inch squares of fabric. Like so. Thank you, Sarah. And then uh, I'll use one at a time here. And then my pieces that go around the edge, 
are the same width. So if you're making this to a different size, they need to be the same width. And I'm going for three inches deep on this one. And I think that's quite a nice size. The cushion that I made on, hi Nancy, on Crate and Craft was a little bit smaller than this, but it was made from the spring garden panels, which we should be getting back in stock quite soon. So I've got three sides with three inches deep. And then the final side, I cut three inches deep, and then I cut that in half, and that's where my zip's going to go. So, oh, Bobbin's good, thank you. Actually quite enjoying the snow, oddly enough. So if you're using a, a, a panel like the, um, the Spring Garden panel, I'd put the zip at the bottom. With this one, it doesn't matter because it's a non-directional fabric. So let's pop the zip in first of all. So... No, Helen, Gary wasn't making the deck chair. I bought the deck chair from America. He was making a swing and we still need some cord, which we've actually bought today to hang, hang it up. So hopefully Maddy will have a swing at some point when things calm down a bit. So let's place this right side down over one side of this fabric. Line up the edges together. I've moved the needle on my machine over to the left hand side and we'll sew straight down the centre. After I've lined up the edges, which that hasn't done, let's get it. Let's do it right, Deborah. Okay. Might be a little bit speedy, this, but it is actually a very simple... Oh, I think you need a new needle in this. That's a bit noisy. It is quite a simple cushion. Okay, so I've got zip face down over one side. If you're using a directional fabric, try and get the direction the same way on both sides. Then the second side goes on top of the zip here, and I like to do it from this side so I can see where I'm sewing, and line up the edges of the two fabrics across the top here. I find it easier not to pin on something like this. Uh, foot down. Because you spend half the time putting the pins in and half the time trying to work around them. So if you can just keep lining the edge of the fabric up to the edge of the zip, I found that the easiest way to go. So that is very noisy. I might change the needle in a minute. We'll see how we go. Right, so let's take this out. And I've done it again, haven't I? Haven't got my eye in and I haven't got my pad. Took them to Crate and Craft the other day and I think I've just left them down in the other office. So I'm just going to press or finger press the fabric away from the zip and then I'll top stitch down each side just to hold that in place. So let's pop that on here. My needle can go back into the central position and just top stitch along each side. Now when I've done this, when I put the zip in, remember this was three inches deep and when I've chopped it in half and put the zip in, it should still measure three inches deep, but we'll measure that in just a second. Let's turn this around. Squash this one out and top stitch down this side. I'm blaming the snow for any buffering and freezing or anything because I, everything from this end is going out perfectly well. So I will try at some point, now I'm way behind with these extra videos, to try and make a video of this and what did I do the other day that I need to do a video of? can't remember. There was something else last week. Uh, the rolls of zips. Uh, at the moment, Francesca, I can't get hold of coloured ones, but we may be able to get hold of um, uh, black and white, but we're, we're still looking into that at the moment. Um, Place some ribbon on the zip pull and when you sew all the way around the cushion then pull the zip. That's a nice, it looks nice as well Alan, doesn't it when you do that. So this is what we've got. So I'm going to chop off the end of the zip here. Open up the zip at this end and I'm just going to sew it closed again. So you can do that by hand or you can do that on the machine. But that just helps to hold the zip in place without opening up when we start to construct the rest of the cushion. 
so let's do that. Let's go back again. Now we're going backwards, supposedly. Oh, well, we'll just stay that way then. Okay. Temperamental machine. I was going to cover that over. I was sewing um, down in the house with this machine earlier on because my straight stitch machine doesn't do a zigzag and I needed that for this. And I normally cover the light over on my machine so it doesn't blind everybody, but I haven't got any blue tack handy. Just chopping the end of the zip off. Let me just see if I've got any in my, in my drawers, something I can cover that up with. No, I don't. So sorry if that light's a little bit bright. Can't do anything about it. Okay. So that's that. So now if I measure this against the other three sides, it should be three inches still. If it's not, if it's wider, then just trim these down to the same size. It won't be by very much. So if this turns out to be wider than this one, trim it down. If it turns out to be a little bit too narrow, trim these down so that they're all the same size. Then we're going to sew all of these four pieces, right sides together, to make a big loop. So again, if you've got a directional fabric, make sure that they're facing in the same direction. So let's place these two pieces together and I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just sew these together along the edge. It doesn't have to be exactly one quarter of an inch as long as all of your seams are uniform. So let's line that up there, plonk that on there, put you down there and sew it. So over the end of the zip, and we'll snip that off. And then next one on here, line up the edges like so. Nice and straight, put this one down and so. And again, now over here, ends together and so. And then the final one is the two ends here. So those together. So I've got a big loop of fabric pieces all sewn right sides together. There we go. And that goes down and away we go. Right. Sorry, I went a bit wobbly then because I was reading the messages. Uh, told on Friday I wasn't at the for surgery. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that sounds painful. Uh, right, so I've got a big loop of fabric like so. Then I'm going to mark the centres, I meant to do that then, of each one of those pieces. So let's fold each one in half. So I'm mashing the seams up here. And I'm just going to make a little snip at the halfway mark. You could use... A, um, an erasable pen, or it doesn't have to be erasable actually, it's within the seam allowance, if you prefer, but I'm just making a tiny snip, I find that easier. So let's do that on all four of these. You could have done these before you sewed them together, if you preferred. So just marking the centre point so I can match these to the centre of the top and the bottom of the cushion. China thimbles. No, we don't carry them, Lavina. I do collect them though, funnily enough. Uh, all kinds of thimbles, actually. I've got quite a Quite a collection of thimbles at the moment, mainly that my son and daughter-in-law buy for me. Uh, right, and there. So how many have I done? One, two, let's do this one, done that one. So on all four pieces. So take your time with this because this is an important for matching up this fabric to the top and the bottom of your cushion cover. A little snip there. Again, only tiny snips if you're doing this because we don't want to be snipping into anywhere near where the seam allowance is. And that's that. And then with the front and back, uh, what have I done with it? There it is. I'll do these at the same time. So we need to mark the centre points of all of these as well. So if we fold this in half this way, then a little snip here. A little snip here and then fold in half this way and do the same at these points. 
Oh, Cerakote symbols too. I've got loads of them. Love them. I'm all over the place. Right, so those are all marked up. Okay. Um, I know, Debbie, I, I don't know what's going on with it. I'm blaming the snow. Oh, oh, Carrie. Oh. Um, blood and collect thimbles, but only from where in the world I go. I, I, if I did that, I may have three thimbles. <laughs> I'll have to supply them first, Laura. Excuse me, you don't want to watch me drink, do you? Okay. So we're going to put the, the loop around the outer fabric, right sides together. So again, if you're making this with one of our fabric panels, we'll get those back in stock again, uh, by the way, soon. Um, make sure this is the right way up and the zip goes at the bottom and whichever is going to be the top goes to the top of this. This is non-directional fabric, so it really doesn't matter. And then we'll line up the little snips that I made into the seam allowance and stick a pin in. And then you'll see where you come to the end of the fabric overlaps the seam slightly. So where this panel is here and you come to the end of it, that's where the end of the fabric underneath should be. So when I come to this point, when I'm sewing, I stop with the needle at the seam and pivot. So I'm sewing up to about a quarter of an inch from the edge and then back down again. So I'm going to line up the center points on each one Stick lots of pins all the way around here if you're not sure. No harm in doing that whatsoever. But if you're a little bit more of a seasoned sewer, just line up the centre parts and the rest of it should follow. Hello, uh, Arachulis, Arachulis Fernandez, is that right? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Hello from South America. Always connected, she says. Uh, a sneak peek in the fabric a while ago. Oh, Sarah, it's been delayed and it's been delayed and it's been delayed. And I, it, it's the it's the fabric that's on the header on my YouTube uh, on my Facebook page, a country walk. Uh, it was supposed to be out in March and then it was June. Well, it's June now. It's coming out in June. And I've actually had an email from the supplier today, just saying what pre cuts do we want? Orders going out today. What do you want on Crate and Craft? So I'm, I'm so excited that it is still actually going ahead. It's a 10 piece collection and it's all my, it's watercolour paintings this time. Um, and it's very green and trees and, and styles and gates and, and stone walls and animals that I see in the woodland. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. So th there will be hopefully fat quarters, one meter pieces, half meter pieces, jelly rolls, chomp, all, all, all kinds of things. So yes, yeah, Sarah, so I'll, I'll get around to, um, to show you that a little bit nearer the date. I haven't even got this. I had enough samples to make a couple of samples for the show, which, which are, are still at the um, at, at our suppliers. So um, yeah, so it'll be June. Takes ages. Takes ages to do that. I haven't got any here to show you. I'm very excited about that one. Um, oh, Peggy's got oh short term memory. By the time I read out my measurements and go to cut out, I forget the measurements. Um, Come with the, the fa this fabric, Trevor, is um, the extra wide Lynette Anderson backing fabric in cream. It's on the new arrivals on the website, on my website. Oh, thank you, Pippa. I'm glad you liked it. Oh, Laura, Kim's strawberry fabric will hopefully be out in May. It's gorgeous. She hasn't been sent samples yet. The, the images that you see on um, uh, Craft Cotton social media or on their website is taken from the um, uh, from the drawings from the initial designs. But yeah, absolutely, Sarah. I, I walk with Bobby and around the woodlands every day. Well, unless the weather's like this, and it's uh, it's things that we see while we're out there. And in fact, the styles on the fabric, the trees on the fabric, and the hedgerows are actually from there. I didn't sit sketching in some romantic area with you know with a, a cloth cap on and a cape and or a smock and um, and, and painting. I, I just took photos and painted them when I got back. But mm. Morcry Wood, no cherry. Do you know what put me off going to Morcry Wood? I, I like Morcry Wood because you can walk around in a huge figure of eight and it takes ages. But I went, I don't know what season it is when they shoot deer 
and it was really upsetting and I, I didn't I've never been since I didn't it was I didn't like it at all because they anyway not talking about that but anyway I didn't didn't haven't been back since don't want to see that again but I do like more crew woods uh, missed out on the bummy hand volume yeah mm, mm, mm. Deirdre now then we can put some more kits together. I have a one day special on Crate and Craft on the 14th and 15th, and they have booked practically every bamboo handle bag that we can get hold of. And we've got four times as many as we did before, but we were talking to Kim earlier on actually and saying, should we keep some back for the website? So, but I don't know when it'll be because we've still got to get instructions printed from it and have them put together again. So it may be another week or so. But I think we might be able to get a few on the website, but the rest of them will be on Crate and Craft. So have a look. Um, I think it's the 14th and the 15th. 14th is Saturday, 15th is Sunday. And the bamboo handle bags will be on the Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we've, we've got a couple of hundred of them, but I think they're going to go. I think they'll go straight away. But we'll keep going. We have actually bought, or well, Kim has actually bought from the supplier that we have in the Far East, every bamboo handle that they have. So we'll have to, um, we'll have to wait for more to come back in stock, but we will carry on with that one. Um, right, so matching that point in the center, we'll sew all the way around. And again, when I come to the end here, Stop with a needle down right on top of that seam. One more stitch to go. Lift it up. Turn it around. And then carry on. And again, I've got the center points matching up. And coming up to it looks as though, well, the fabric kind of, it does overlap. It's supposed to look when you get to here. So I want to come up to that stitch line again, needle down right on the stitches, move all of this out of the way so we don't get any little puckers in the corners, foot down and carry on. And we go around all four sides. Something just crashed to the floor there. I think it was my machine vibrating things off the table. So right down into the corner. One more stitch, move this out of the way, and back down, pin out, never sew over your pins, into this corner, right on top of the seam, move this out of the way, and carry on from whence I came and then let's just flip this open and take a look at those corners and they should be nice and neat and pointy now if I had my eye in here which I don't I'd then do this and make sure this seems right on the edge but again don't have my eye in so I'm just going to kind of finger crease it and do it as I go but I'm going to sit the seam right on the edge and then top stitch really really close to the edge so that's probably about a sixteenth of an inch so just roll this so it's right on the edge and this helps to keep the box shape boxy it gives it a nice crisp edge so I'm just coming up to that corner seam again so again stop with the needle down right on the seam lift that up and turn all of this around Ooh missed it look and then back down the seam here it is easier if you've already pressed it so that the seam is right on the edge and again keep it really really close to the edge if you're not too good at sewing or top stitching close to an edge like this then you can use a foot with a guide on it so if you have a um, an over edge foot or a blind hem foot, they sometimes have gauges on them. I've just missed the edge of that again, but not to worry. Um, so you can, have I got one here? Something like that, it's got a guide on it. 
so you can push the guide up against the edge that one's got a guide on it so you can push that up against the edge and that helps you to top stitch you can see that little guide sticking out there that that can help you to top stitch in a straight line uniformly if you have a, a problem doing that I mean this is a stage you don't have to do if you just iron this and maybe spray, spray starched it or best pressed then um, that can give it a nice crisp finish as well but it's just a an alternative to using some, something like piping which can give it a nice edge as well and it doesn't take too long and it's very easy to do not the sewing has to be quick you know it's um it's a hobby isn't it so very rarely would you have to make a cushion cover in a rush so these are the kind of things that you can take your time with so let's just roll that again so that the seam's on the edge and again I, I would have pressed that All right. and maybe taking a little bit more time if I was doing this for me I'm not saying that I'm doing it for you so I'm rushing it but you know there's only so much you can watch before you get bored right and then back down here and then we're back to the beginning so again you can see that just gives it a nice crisp edge so then let's put in the second part so we'll just do this in exactly the same way I need to make sure the zip is open a little way so I can turn it the right side out and oh thank you Shirley <laughs> so that's to have a bit of a giggle isn't it there's so much misery and oh, I'm covered in her nice to be a little bit joyous and fun about something uh, 53 got three compound threads oh oh stick with having oh sorry oh no call me quasi she says oh Yvonne <laughs> nice nice you've got a sense of humor about these things uh, how do I do a pie crust oh uh, I don't is that like a uh, the, they call it a mattress stitch where you do it by hand um, I think you do that when the fill is already in there and it's like a big fat blanket stitch that goes through all of the corners and, and gives it a gives it one of them might do that on, a, on another thing so far right same again look what I've got here oh just let you know as well um, I showed you this the other day but this is the uh, the secondary project from Half Yard Club so this is coming out on the 15th we are putting together uh, oh thanks Diane um, some ribbon bundles oh, we, we managed to get hold of some ribbon bundles so there'll be I think there's a dark red a pink there's a blue there's a gold and a couple of shades of green if I can remember rightly this one is embroidery thread that I've used for the leaves and the stems and the French knots and then we've got the, the three different shades of pink so there'll be a little bit more than that in the pink uh, in the ribbon bundle that we've got and I have uh, managed to source some of the natural fabric uh, sorry the felt as well so if you like this kind of felt rather than the plain it's ever so soft then we will be getting those in stock as well so this again comes out um, on the 15th hopefully by the 15th we'll have stock of all of these bits and bobs if you want to make them please don't feel if you're a member of the crane uh, the half crane the half yard club that you've got to buy all of the supplies from me you don't you can buy them from, from wherever you like but I know what it's like when you see something you know oh, oh i've made that heart well i want that ribbon and i want that felt and where do i get it all from and i'll be sending you to different retailers all over the place and it'll cost you a fortune so if you do want to save a little bit of money and um and buy from us then you can do remember you also get your 10 percent discount on the website if you're a half yard club member um, but if you want to buy from elsewhere you want to use different colors i never want you to feel obliged that you have to buy the products from me you don't you, you go where you like okay um, I'm glad you like it, Carrie and Sarah and June. Um, right, thank you, Sarah. So I've done just the same as we did on the other side. So I've just pinned the centre pieces, and again, where that comes to the end there, that's going to overlap. So we'll do exactly the same as we did before. No, no coffee at the moment. I don't know where my coffee is. Don't know what he's doing. <sighs> We've had a huge delivery of fabric, so he might be wading his way through photographing that at the moment. 
I did have one before it came up. It's just, just stone cold. I like cold coffee. Cold coffee. Right. We've got, actually, as well, a lot of downloads going on the website as we go. So anything that you've seen, or the projects that we've been doing on Create and Craft, we've been uploading the um, instructions onto the website. So if you, if you just want the instructions, not fabrics and kits and things, they're on there now. Um, if you are ordering a download, I do say in the description, but please could you log into your account. You should get an email with the, um, with the downloads attached. Sometimes, I don't know why, but they're not coming through. But if you're logged into your account, then the downloads will be on your account. And they're there forever. So, you know, you can download them whenever you want. And uh, you can download as many times as you like as well. So just, just to let you know, if you go into the download section, it's getting bigger and bigger there. But there's some quite nice little projects there. And if it doesn't actually have a pattern with it, if it's just instructions, you don't have to print anything off either. So you can just read them off your screen, which is quite nice. So if you haven't got a printer, there are a lot of them that you don't actually need a pattern for, like the apron that's just gone on. Don't need a pattern for that one. Embroidered flies brief for the heart. That Peggy is going to be on uh, the Half Yard Sewing Club, and it is a. There's no video for it. I'm, I'm going to try and fit in a video of how to make the roses, but it will be on the Half Yard Club website. You need to be a member for that one. It's the next project for members. So if you go to halfyardsewingclub.com, you'll see all the details there. New cushions are outdoor cushions. I think these, these are nice for outdoor cushions, Julie. I did make um, a whole set of cushions like this for my So Outdoor Living book. Um, I had at the time like a, a, a long uh, wrought iron bench with, cur it sounds ever so posh, doesn't it? With curly arms on it. And I made a really big, that was piped as well, a really big cushion for that. i tell you why. I, I, we had... Um, it, it actually gave up the ghost eventually, but we had this dining, dining, a garden set, table and chairs for years. We bought it from John Lewis about 30 years ago. Um, and at the time, I mean, it was quite expensive anyway. It was John Lewis once. It was very posh, but very at market. But the seat pads to go with it that you could buy were £75 each. We had four. So I made them. And the nice thing is when you make things for garden furniture like that, um, you make them whatever fabric you like, and then when you get bored with it, or you change your outdoor decor, then you can just use more fabric and make them all over again. Awful lot cheaper than buying them. I found anyway. Uh, the kits for the heart. It's not, it'll be a ribbon bundle, Megan. So not, not exactly a kit, but we're going to do a ribbon bundle and felt packs they're 30 30 centimeter square felt packs i think that one let me just measure it you'll need two pieces for it um how big is it i can't remember that's about 22 21 22 something like that so you'll need two pieces we'll sell them in twos we'll put them together in packs of two so you'll need one pack of that and a pack of the ribbon um it's only like quarter of a centimetre wide, a uh, quarter of an inch wide ribbon for this one. We don't do embroidery thread. If you want to do the same leaves and everything as this, you will need embroidery threads as well. But you can get that really cheap off Amazon. So we've just had the ribbon pieces put together. It's ever so simple. Um, a, a ribbon embroidery, you can create some of the most amazing embroidered flowers, but it involves silk ribbon and using the ribbon like embroidery thread so you take it through the fabric. This ribbon is a polyester, it's a double-sided satin, it's an awful lot cheaper than silk, but it's difficult to take through fabric. So this is two different ways of creating roses without actually sewing through the fabric. We will, at, um, at some point, um, look into ribbon embroidery kits. It'll be a while though, because I, I, I don't want to sell you a really expensive ribbon, and at the moment it's working out really expensive for silk, so that's an alternative. Seat box cushion pads, Deirdre, try um, Donnell. You might have to cut them down to size or have them cut to size. The foam can be really expensive, but they do like solid blocks of foam that you can use for seat pads. So that's where I bought mine from. Uh, make a handbag pattern from one April piece of paper. Oh, right. I think we're talking to somebody else. So this is what we've got. 
So that's the top of it, look. So I've already sewn around there, so that's nice and boxy and square. So I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. So again, I would normally iron it with the seam right on the edge. This one, Helen, you could put, it's got toy filler in it and I used an essence. I've, I've got quite a few really favorite es essences. I love patchouli, I love rose oil. Personally, I'm not a great fan of lavender. Um, but lavender is supposedly perfect for hanging over a bed head to be relaxing in the evening. But whatever your favorite essence is, just as you're putting the toy filler in, then put a few drops in there. And of course you can re replenish it, just put some drops on the back of it because the felt will absorb it anyway. But lavender would be perfect, so just sprinkle that amongst the toy filler. Um, rose I love, rose I love it. Crate and craft putty. June's gone very cold in here. Oh, anyway, I'll just get told. So, embroidery says on Amazon 30p. Good thinking. So I'm going to, again, take the... Where do these threads come from? Take the very edge and just roll it so that the seam's right on the edge and we'll sew all around. One more time. So I'll just keep moving. It, it is a lot easier if you pressed it first, but, you know... I must get a second eye and I took all my sewing stuff to create and craft. Oh, oh, talking of which, um, on Sunday is Seamless Sunday. Oh, I hate doing that. I hate doing that. But see anyway, you can do it. Um, so that's the big, long six-hour sewing show on Sunday morning from 7 o'clock in the morning through to 1 o'clock. And I've been asked, instead of doing the quiz that I normally do, if we can do a, a Q&A for my guests. So I'm kind of thinking if you've got any funny questions that you would like to ask anybody. We have Alistair from House of Alistair. Uh, we have Karen from Seams. So two of the regulars. Then we have a brand new book launch from Portia, which is a, a dressmaking book. I don't sure what I'm doing here while I'm talking. And who else have we got? Oh, who else have we got? Oh, we've got Gary from Dukey with a brand new Dukey sewing machine, which is under a thousand pounds. So that's going to be the one day special. Oh, I'm going to be bringing you some uh, craft cotton Jubilee fabrics, including bunting. That could be quite early on. Who else have we got? Oh, it's really bad, isn't it? I can't remember what else we've got. I do write these things down. I just forgot to bring it down with me. But if you can think of any amusing questions, you know, generally, just, you know, what, what's, what would be your superpowers or, or even serious ones? When did you start sewing? Anything like that. There is a dedicated Seamless Sunday email address which I'll post in the next couple of days on, on Facebook. Um, it's seamless Sunday at createandcraft.com. So if you do have anything that you would like to ask any of the guests. So anything funny, anything serious. I like to ask them, like I, I asked Alistair once, um, what, what career he would have if it wasn't sewing. And he said he'd own a sweet shop. So any, anything like that, just uh, send me the questions and we'll see if we can answer them. Um, right, almost done with this. And then we'll put the cushion pad in and we'll see if it actually works. See, this does actually come together quite quickly. Even though it's um, the box shift, the zip going all the way across the panel, all that kind of thing, it's not, not a difficult, time-consuming thing to do probably couldn't have made an envelope back in the same time. Separate how to do for the... I'll try to, Golden Bliss. Try to. It won't be for a few days yet, though my schedule is actually jam-packed full at the moment, but I will try to do these. Um, like I was saying earlier on, if I can do the live stream and do a video the same, then it caters for people that don't want to sit to the chat and just want the project. 
but it's, uh, it's finding the time to do it. Okay, let me sniff off all of the threads. The <coughs> oh gosh, excuse me. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, just in from work. Oh, let, no, I was late, Leslie. I was about half an hour late coming today. I've had a, a, a pretty hectic day. Jennifer's asked for a video as well. I, I'll try. I'll try and do something on Saturday. Cause that's the next time I'm going to be down here filming after the live. But I'm, I'm not, I could do with a, a week of just making videos like this. It's, um, oh, thank you, Alan. Seven till one. I know you're emailing every time. We just get inundated and sometimes they don't all come down to me. But thank you. I know you're always there. Don't know what I'm making on Saturday, Deirdre. Don't know. Don't know. I'll go through some of your suggestions and see what we come up with. Right, so that's what we've got. Let's see what this looks. A little bit poofy, but let's have a look what it looks like when it's in there. I think we might have to take some of the toy filler out of this one, or the toy filler, cushion filler out of it. But let's see what it looks like first. Because I do want it to be... Oh, no, that's not so bad. That's not so bad, look. But like I said right at the beginning, these cushions, the, the filler doesn't go right into the corner. So I'm just having a rummage through my drawers because I've got some toy filler somewhere. But just not where I want it. So that's a little bit too puffy and the corners aren't filled. So don't do this with feathers. But I'm just going to take some of this out to make it a bit flatter. So I like that shape a bit better. But as, like I was saying earlier, these cushion pads aren't very good at filling in corners. But this is. So let's just push some extra toy filler right into the corner. Ribbon roses on a on a makeup bag. Oh, well, I can't do ribbon roses, Deirdre, because those are a half yard club project. Um, but they would look nice in a makeup bag. I'll do the ribbon roses video for the half yard club. I don't like to give things away that people have already paid for, so I'm afraid I won't be able to do that. Right, so squish this down. On these little loose threads. So how's that looking? That's looking okay, isn't it? I'm quite pleased with that. And I think we're okay in these corners as well. Let me zip the zip up a little bit so I can get in this one without it getting trapped in the zip teeth. Maybe I should take a little bit more filling out of that. No, I quite like it. I quite like it like that. And then this one I think might be okay going into the corners. Let's see how we look. catching the cushion in there. Move out of the way. I think that's okay. So let's give it a, a bit of that. Flatten it down. Did I see a thread? Don't know. That's the end of the zip. Maybe do a little bit more with the filler taken out just to make it a little bit flatter. But that I'm actually quite pleased with. So the, um, the actual cushion pad is a bit lumpy was 12 inches but because it's got the depth I've made the fabric 12 inches which means the cushion cover will now be 11 and a half inches but it will fit the deeper cushion pad because you've got the depth there it's not like a two di dimensional cushion cover in which case it would need to be a little bit bigger but that I think I need to take some more out that's too puffy too puffy a fabric book for a baby that's a nice idea uh, old Janie chrysanthemum fabric would look lovely as one of these. I was thinking this, I was, I was making this one up when I was saying about the um, the spring garden panels. So actually, chrysanthemum would be very nice. That's better. That's a little bit flatter. I think I'm happier with that. Anne's doing a large zipper bag from So Brilliant Bag Book. I'll have to get hold of a book. I don't keep stock of all of the books. And the stock I do have is um, down at the office. So I'll have to see if I can find one and have a look. Um, that's a good idea. 16 inch cushion pad, 14 inches now I've shown it. Yeah, it's easy to do that, just open them up and take stuff out. And to be honest, um, you know, you're going to have to take, if you're going to wash these, you'll have to take all of that out and start all over again. 
But how often do you wash a cushion cover? I don't. I do the ones that, that the dog sits on on the sofa, not that she's allowed on the sofa, you know. She never goes on the sofa. Um, they get a wash, but more often than not, these are decorative. So they just get a wipe clean if they get any stains on them. Um, chatter, oh chatter, Peggy, I'm now a member of Half Yard Club for the next year, I hope you don't mind my chatter. Chatter as much as you like, Peggy, that's what it's all about. Oh, a button in the middle, it would look lovely, imagine that with a button in the middle. To put it, you wouldn't be able to take that off to wash it now, but, but does it, does it matter? Uh, passion for a soft book in, oh, talking to somebody else. Um, a garden kneeler for the show, that's a nice idea. Might need one for each knee of that of that kind of size, but that's a good. You could do an oblong one, couldn't you? That didn't. Oh, that would be nice. So you could do one twice the size of that, because you can get oblong, oblong rectangular cushions, of course. Um, and I think Fiona, if it's going to be a kneeler, maybe put a little strap on one side in the same fabric, but just do a little, a little one of those, so you can carry it. One of those. Top stitch the corner. Yes, you could do. Maybe you should have done that. Yes, Trevor, you could top stitch the corners. That give it a nice crisp finish as well. Um, right. Downloads of the bamboo handle bags. Um, we could, Sarah, but you'd need the bamboo handles. So with the uh, not the round ones, but with the other one, I did say I think on on Crate and Craft on Sunday that um, you could easily make a fabric strap for that as well. So that's that would be an idea. Just need to make the the fabric strap and redo the instructions for them, but we could do that. Ring cushions for weddings, that's a nice idea. Okay, so right, I'm off anyway, so I did it's 26. So um, I shall see you again on Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning, and then I shall see you on, um, that's a good idea, Alan, on Sunday morning for the six hour um, show on Create and Craft. I'll put details up over the next couple of days on Facebook and on YouTube for Odeco. Oh, that's a good idea, Fiona. Um, but just to remind you of what times were there and everything. And that's about it. I have got a, a couple of days off later on in the month because of the um, Stitch Festival at London. So I won't be doing the Wednesday and the Saturday of that week because I'll be in London. But, um, oh, thank you, Sarah. No, sorry, miss, missed that one. So Joan, yes, we, but we do need the handles, so I need to redo the instructions. So hopefully, we'll, well, I'll get around to doing that when I get time, when I've sewn more days in the weeks. <laughs> the squash cushion good for a hot dinner plate on it. That's a nice idea, that's a good idea. Um, Oh, Nancy, I have before now. If I wake up in the middle of the night, you know when you have a dream and the dream is really, really vivid and you remember everything about it for seconds, then when you wake up in the morning, you say, I know I had a really good dream last night. So dreams in the middle of the night, I'm awake and writing them down or getting up and making them. So sometimes, yes, that is the way that it works. Uh, bye, Linda. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Hope you enjoyed it. The box behind. Hmm. Hmm. Laura, that's a little bit of a that's a little bit of a tease because I've only just finished making that today, and that is one of three different sizes of lidded boxes, which are going to be April's main project for Half Yard Club. Hmm. Hmm. But I can't get it down to show you because I should be in such big trouble for even putting it there. But you asked for not you personally, Laura, but I was asked for lidded. Um, boxes, so you're getting lidded boxes, and that's going to be one of the same fabric actually, the same fabric as that one. I did two with the blue one as well. Um, so let me just do a little bit of oh, look, snow hair. Um, got drenched coming down here, it's so wet, and I'm covered in, covered in thread again. Oh, don't care, don't care. Batteries going in my mouse. Um, need to do that. Not with you on Saturday, I'm going to help my daughter, the one I had in my set. Oh, Jennifer, I hope she's okay. Helen's, yeah, just, uh, give her our love. We're, we're all thinking of her. Uh, love the yatta, thanks, Toby. Sewing days in the week make good. It's funny, funny you say that, Sarah. Um, going to the Stitch Festival. Oh, Martine, look forward to seeing you there as well. And anybody that's coming to the Stitch Festival, remember, um, I don't know who you are. When we, we saw um, Irene at um, the 
Franklin's opening in Ipswich a few weeks ago, she came in with a big badge that she'd written, sellotape to a cardi with Irene written on it. So put your name on there. But do come and say hello. If you are going to the Stitch Festival, do come and say hello. Me and Kim will be there and the Search Press team. And Tilly Rose is going to be there on the Thursday and Friday. I know she's there on the Friday. I think she's there Thursday and Friday. Uh, we'll be there for the, well, I'll be there for the whole four days. Hopefully Kim will be able to join me for most of that as well. But do come and say hello. I might even go and have a cuppa in the bar next door at some point. So come in there and we'll have a cuppa together as well. That would be nice. Uh, thank you, Clow. And, uh, oh, Connie, hello. Uh, and bye. Snowing heavy in Daventry. It's dark. It's gone dark. I better go and put my chickens away. Um, I shall see you on Saturday. Thank you so much for your company today. Apologies again for being late. I hope you enjoyed this. I will try and do uh, a dedicated video, but again, it, it may be a, a few days until I can fit it.